Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Welcome to the Near and Far.com. It is a pleasure to have you with us today, and we are thrilled today to welcome Essie Mwati, who is the author of this book, Mobilized, an insider's guide to the business and future of connected technology. Today, we are going to be talking about how to build great apps. And I am thrilled that you are able to join us today. Now, I know a little bit about this book because I am lucky enough that you asked me, I'm honored that you asked me to write the foreword to this book. Uh, but I think it's an important book, and I'm so glad that you're here with us today because unlike a lot of business books out there, we've, we have a lot of authors on this show, and a lot of business authors either come from a academic background or from a more practitioner background, and you are very much in the practitioner camp. Now you also teach, but tell us a little bit first about your background and how you got started in the field. Yeah, absolutely, and thanks for having me, Nir. It's great to be here. My pleasure. So, um, you know, I started my career as an engineer and then got a business degree, and then most of uh, my time as a practitioner, I worked for uh, mobile first companies. I worked for Electronic Arts, I worked for Facebook, for Nokia, for Trolia. I had my own company, which Facebook acquired. And so through that you know, dozen years of experience building services that nobody has really built, had really built before at the time, I learned what it takes to, number one, build a mobile product that is used today by you know, billions of people, whether it's Facebook or Nokia, um, and also uh, see how companies transition to becoming mobile first. And for existing companies, that's a huge challenge that they're facing today. All right, right. So, so give us kind of a taste here. What's the, if you could boil down, which you did in your book already, from your years of experience in industry, what does it take to make a great mobile product? Yes, absolutely. You know, the one thing I learned is it's easier than we think. The, the main thing to remember is that we see our mobile products as extensions of ourselves. Whether it's a smartphone or a wristband or a pair of glasses or, you know, any sort of mobile product like a, pair of, a, a piece of clothing, we see that as an extension of ourselves. And so when we think of what's the best mobile product out there or a great mobile product out there, we have to think of what's my best self? And then I use the mind, body, spirit framework to describe that. So body, we want to look good. We expect that our mobile products will look good. Mm. Spirit, we want to have meaningful lives. We expect the same thing from our mobile products, that they will be very personalized. And then mind, we want to keep learning and growing as people. We expect that our mobile products will do the same. Mm. Fantastic. So you, do you recommend that product teams, uh, the audience of this book, I'm guessing it's PMs, it's designers, uh, are they thinking about that, that, that framework as they're starting or in the middle of the project? Like, where is this most useful for them? Yes, absolutely. Um, so the audience for this book is actually the audience of people who take my class at Stanford. And we had a lot of product people, entrepreneurs, designers, but we also had CFOs of companies who are transitioning to mobile. So it's really anyone who wants to understand the mobile revolution. Mm -hmm. Now, when they should use this book is whether they have a brand new product there's actually a step-by-step -step guide, and I just released a new workbook that will give them really like detailed instruction on how to get started with a new product. Mm -hmm. But if they have an existing product, I look at a ton of case studies, and, I've, and I give also a number of tests and rules that they can use to see if their product pass uh, certain of, you know, some of these um, uh, rules that yeah. I described. Can you give us an example of how, when you've worked with, with clients or at your former companies like Facebook and, and other companies you work with, Nokia, how, can you give us an example of how this came in handy and how you were led to a different conclusion versus what the team may, might have originally thought was the answer? Yes, absolutely. So here's an example. I'll take the, the mind rule, the, that um, rule that uh, help us, helps us learn along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked for Nokia and I, we built an augmented reality slash search discovery service. Now, we started with uh, processes that uh, were restricted to the R&D organization, engineering, product, and design, with, with you know, uh, processes that are pretty well known in Silicon Valley, like Agile and Lean and that kind of stuff. Now, one thing that we uh, didn't get is we didn't get the business results that we expected. And that's because at the time, mobile was, was still very new and perceived as a technology as opposed to a complete culture change, which mm. is really what it is. Mm. We, it, we decided to expand our methodologies to the entire organization. So not just R&D or back office or IT, however you call it in your organization, but also the front office, sales, marketing, customer support. 
So the entire organization started to use agile methodology. Mm -hmm. And that all of a sudden completely transformed our business results. So mm -hmm. when you look at this framework that I give, you want to pick and choose what is relevant for your organization. It's not a one-size-fits-all model. It's a, it's a very personalized model, and understandably so, because we are all humans and we are all unique. Mm -hmm. And one of the big things that mobile brings to the table is this extreme personalization with the support of technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the, the, the biggest takeaway from your years at Facebook? I, I often use Facebook as the the model, the, the archetype of a company that's doing so many things right. And it, what's particularly interesting about Facebook is they were a desktop first product, right, when it started uh, at, uh, at Harvard. And then they successfully transitioned into a mobile product, which is actually pretty rare. Not many companies can make that interface shift. So you were kind of at the heart of that transition. What, what did you learn? What, what, did you, what stuck with you from that experience? Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, and, and you remember, I'm sure, like Facebook is going to die because it's not getting mobile. So I was really like instrumental in helping with that transition. One of the main things that I think Facebook did is it started thinking Facebook, um, it started thinking mobile was a technology. So it trained everybody to, to every engineer to the programming languages of mobile. Hmm. And the stock went from $40 to $20. So the thing that Facebook really understood at that critical moment where it was really in trouble is that it's a culture change. Mm. And so when you go and look at a culture change in an organization, you look at a number of things. One is um, you start to make a lot of acquisitions. Um, so big acquisitions like Instagram and WhatsApp that remain brand in the Facebook overall conglomerate, mm. and also small acquisitions like my company to bring talent in the organization that understands mobile. Mm. That helps transform the culture. Mm. Then it started a, an entirely new um, mobile division in the organization that says we are responsible for mobile success because mm. nobody else really wanted to own it or mm. didn't really know how to own it. Mm. And when it started showing some success, the rest of the organization said, wait a minute, you're building a mobile newsfeed, but I'm the newsfeed team, so I want to build my own mobile newsfeed. Mm. Okay, so do you understand how to build for mobile? And then there was a back and forth, a lot of reorganization, a lot of learning from one division to the other to ultimately make sure that everybody in the organization was uh, understanding what mobile is about. Mm -hmm. And that took about you know, 12 to 18 months, which for Facebook is a really long time. For any company, I would say it takes three to five times that amount. A mm -hmm. lot of the companies that I work with right now, they're just beginning their mobile journey. Right. Now, it's a little bit late, because if you look at what happened to companies like Motorola and Blackberry and Nokia and Yahoo and a lot of these, it only takes a couple years for them to disappear because we all change devices every 18 months. Right, right. And so when you say mobile, you're, you're not just talking mobile phone, right? You're, you're talking any new interface, the watch, the, the uh, voice interface. Do you think the same principles of the, these, this trinity applies to any new interface? Absolutely. And that's a question I get all the time. Like, how do you define mobile? How do you define mobility? Mm -hmm. I will say there are really two things. The first one is a mobile product has your real identity as opposed to a persona like an advertising billboard or some IP address with a bit of cookie like a you know, web interface. Mm -hmm. And it also has your context mm -hmm. as opposed to you know, assuming where you might be or uh, making assumptions based on what you know, your browsing history and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. these two criteria, your real identity and your context are what defines mobility. So it doesn't really matter what the actual product is. In fact, you know, a smartphone is a very clunky interface. When, when you think about it, it, it doesn't quite fit in one hand. Right. It isn't quite usable by one hand. Yeah. It doesn't quite fit in a pocket. Yeah. So. so it's identity and context. I think that's, that's right. really, really interesting. And I think what's so interesting about that, and specifically with mobile, is that the context, what we can do with context, is so much more interesting now. The fact that uh, I can target people or I can trigger people at exactly the moment in time that's contextually relevant that they really need the product or service. I guess as the interface shrinks uh, and now it's it just more easily accessible or I guess even disappears now with uh, Alexa and Cortana and Siri just becoming this voice interface. It's really about this technology being anywhere all the time so that whenever we need it, uh, it's, it's useful. Absolutely, and, and all these services ultimately will be invisible, right? Yeah, and that, that yeah. is really the goal. A and um, you're absolutely right that this personalization, the context and the identity, is what I think is the biggest opportunity for mobile. And mm. right now, we're only scratching the surface. I'll, I'll give you an example. 
You take Airbnb, for example, it's a fantastic mobile service. Mm -hmm. And yes, you can say, oh, it started as a website, but it is a real amazing mobile service. What's amazing about Air Airbnb is that you know, it will show you beautiful listings, it will show you places you may want to visit, but it doesn't show you places that your friends have gone to mm. or that are in your price range or that based on what other people like you do could you know, uh, be of interest to you. Mm. There is so much more that Airbnb could do to be more personalized. Mm. And Airbnb is at the forefront of mobile. So I think that we're really just scratching the surface with personalization. Where I see opportunities are with big industries, big boring you know, insurances, payment systems that know so much about us, probably more than you know, at least I know about mm -hmm, myself. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And, and using all that data to personalize a mobile experience, there's actually a lot of, a lot of power into that. Hmm. And so they might not even be late to the party quite yet because there's very few of those big companies are actually uh, applying their technology and their, the data that they have well right now uh, in the mobile space to begin with. So that, that, that still might be a greenfield there, opportunity. There are still opportunities for them, yes. They could be disrupted very quickly, mm -hmm. but it's true that they have a lot of data behind the firewall mm -hmm. that uh, will, will help them um, you know, stay, stick around for yeah. a little bit longer. You, you said in the book, and you said earlier, that it's a cultural shift. It's not just a technology shift. Tell me more about that. Yes, absolutely. So cultural shift, uh, and, and I'll go back to Facebook. You need to you know, really understand that um, if you think of mobile as a technology change, what you're going to do is you're going to do what people did during the you know, Web 2.0 or Web 1.0 era. You're going to take your big website and you're going to say, cram that into like a little tiny smartphone or a watch or you know, something else. And you're going to fail because the business models aren't uh, adequate, the technology isn't adequate, it's mo a lot of money and there's zero ROI. And so basically you're going to you know, see it as a technology change and it's going to be a big cost on your IT budget that doesn't bring any ROI. Mm -hmm. Instead, if you see it as a culture change, what you're going to be looking at is um, what are the new business models that I can invent with mobile? Mm -hmm. What are the new ways that I can use you know, real identity and context to reach people on mobile? Mm -hmm. So the way that, you know, and companies are still skeptical about that. Yeah, that's all very nice. It's all creative. It's all what you guys do in Silicon Valley. But what I look at is um, the cost of a mistake. Mm -hmm. You look at Facebook a free web site, right? It doesn't take a lot to fix a mistake. It's free, so it doesn't really cost anything from a you know, business perspective. And it's a web service, so it's very easy to patch. Mm. Right? But when Facebook becomes a mobile app, you cannot patch things very quickly. It takes actually a few weeks, right? So the cost of a mistake in terms of technology is higher. And the business model of Facebook, when it was a free web service, and now when it is you know, different kind of advertising on, on mobile and, and uh, a little bit more refined and personalized, is also a little bit higher. So initially, the culture at Facebook was move fast and break things. Great for a free web service. But recently, during the mobile transition, they removed the break things part. Yeah. Just move fast, because yeah. if you break things on Facebook, it's going to stick with you. You're going to get bad reviews. People are going to delete your app. They're not going to like it. All right. It's not just Facebook. It's any company needs to adapt to the cost of a mistake from a business and technology perspective that mobile requires. Mm. So how do you do that as you, as you get bigger? I mean, I, I, big companies are legendary. I and mean, we have kind of a joke here in Silicon Valley that, thank God, big companies are so slow to adapt because it provides opportunity for us little guys to get started. But if you are, if you are at a big company and you're just pulling your hair out that the innovation isn't happening quickly enough, maybe because of cultural reasons, right? Maybe it's an organizational behavior problem more than, than knowing what to do. It's actually getting it done. What's been your experience? How, how do you yeah. move things along? Yeah. Other you, than you get have, everybody at the company the book, right? Of course, that's of the course, first step. <laughs> of course, you need to do that. Thank you. Um, so, so there are a few options. One is you buy your way into mobile. If you can afford it, that's probably the best thing you can do. Mm. You let a small company in Silicon Valley do innovation and disruption and be successful enough that you're like, okay, so I'm going to build, bring that as a brand mm. Mm. and let them be successful in this new business model. Even if model. it's crazy expensive, you, Even you just if pay. It's crazy, if you can afford it, mm. you do that. And mm -hmm. that's what a company like Facebook Yeah, did. I remember right. when they bought Instagram, right? Everybody laughed at them. A billion dollars. A billion for, dollars. What, a, what a joke. A billion dollars. What a ripoff. It turns out it's worth, what, $35 it, billion today? It's a great deal, right? Yeah. So Zuckerberg has a, a real talent at that. And WhatsApp, same story. Right, right. right. $19 billion that turned it's out to be a fantastic deal. Yeah. So if you can afford that, 
that is your best bet because that is the best way you're gonna stay at the cutting edge of mobile. Mm -hmm. Now most companies cannot afford that. So what you do is you bring in mobile talent and you, you have to be prepared for a lot of back and forth in the organization. I mentioned right. a couple of steps at Facebook, created a mobile organization, said now this team is responsible for mobile success. Mm -hmm. And then when there is success, everybody becomes, you know, wants to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. So breaking up this team in smaller teams or having maybe a rotational program for that team to right. go and learn from other product teams. Mm -hmm. And then there's actually a lot of back and forth to understand that um, it, what is the best organization when a company becomes mobile first. Yeah, and what if what if it doesn't succeed? What if it doesn't take off like Facebook does? I mean, this is what I see at a lot of big companies where they, they have the skunk works, they have the little you know project that hopes will create the next disruptive business. But as soon as things don't work out or they don't, you know, they don't hit a home run on the first go, they pull the plug and they pull the budget. How, how do you think about, about that? Try point? again. Yeah. You know, here's what happens at companies. Mm -hmm. the, the, the uh, mobile transition is not driven by IT. It's driven by marketing, mm -hmm. right? Because more than uh, half of you know, their user base right now at most companies is, is, is using their mobile services. Mm -hmm. So what companies start to do is they, their marketing de department says, OK, people are on mobile. We're going to allocate budgets to mobile marketing. And they start spending on mobile advertising. Now, mobile advertising is not very effective. It mm. used to be in the very, very early days. Now, it's not a very good, you know, mobile is not a very good interface for advertising. Mm. So without a mobile product, mobile marketing departments are actually very limited. Mm. And then they go and they turn to their R&D organization and they say, you know, without an app or a website or something that, you know, is a product, we're not going to be very effective with our marketing dollars. We're not getting the ROI we need. So hey, engineering, build us an app, build us a mobile website. Mm. Engineering is excited. Yes, we're going to build something brand new. And so they look at you know, what it takes to build a mobile product. Now, the challenge is it's very expensive because right. you need to build a mobile website, an app for iOS, an app for Android, sometimes for tablets, sometimes for watches. They come, they show the bill to the CFO who says, there's no way we're doing that. Mm. And so the CEO has to sort of arbitrate that. And mm. he will go back and forth between you know, saying, Okay, we're, we'll do whatever the CMO needs, you know, needs from us because we need more customers. We need more engagement to, okay, we got to cut costs. And that's just going to be a lot of back and forth. You have to be prepared for that back and forth and for that back and forth to go really quick mm. because you can get out of business fast. All right, All right. So it's really a threat to not do something. And maybe that's the right way for the CEO to look at this mobile opportunity. If you're not at the cutting edge, you're falling behind, you're, you're at risk of being disrupted by a different industry player. And CMOs make the case better and better, as far as I can tell, mm. just because the list keep getting longer, right? Mm. You see BlackBerry, you see Motorola, you right. see Yahoo, you see... Tr you know, the Nokia. graveyards are filling up. Absolutely, right. very quickly. Interesting. Interesting. So one more point before we go here. Give us just one quick bit of advice. If you could talk to PMs, designers, entrepreneurs, people who have dreams of making it big and mobile, is there one motto that you would love to, for them to keep top of mind? Well, so I'll tell them, you know, look at the mobile formula and remember that it's easier than you think. I talk with a lot of technical people who says, oh, you know, I need to do a lot of analysis. I need to learn to program really well. I need to, you know, understand how app store marketing work and works and all that kind of, you know, complexity. Mm. No, it's actually easier than you think. Mm. It's about like building things that people want and remember it's about like having our real identity. What can you do with that that you couldn't do before? And understanding our context. What can you do with our context that you couldn't do before? Terrific. That's my advice to entrepreneurs. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, again, thank you so much for being here. Just to remind you, the book is called Mobilize, an insider's guide to the business and future of connected technology. So glad you could join us today. And thank you for watching today. Great to, to have you with us. Uh, join us again. We'll be here in a couple weeks. Uh, for more great insights from business authors like SC. Thank you so much. Thanks for having Appreciate me, Nir. Thanks for coming.